Okay. Ranger. We've rolled a couple of Ranger's cooldown reduction traits into baseline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Basically, Warhorn, you get the cooldown for free now. Um, survivals, you get the cooldown for free now. Signets, you mostly get the cooldown for free. In fact, some of the signets were bad, so they made him even better. Uh, <laughs> because no one took this trade anyway, basically. Um... You might go, wow, look at these cooldown reductions. Oh no. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. This, the Wilderness Survival Package was almost always taken. And the reason was because you get so much Condition Cleanse on Ranger. Your heal skill even removes two colonies because you get a little mini muddy terrain when you use your heal skill, which then cleanses two colonies and Troll Ungent for another two. So this survival package was taken on a huge amount of Ranger builds. Um, so in a lot of senses, you always had this cooldown reduction anyway. This is more like it's just freeing it up a little bit and they're trying to basically diversify condition cleanse on um, Ranger a little bit more. Uh, you can see here with Empathic Bond, that's exactly what they've done here. So on Empathic Bond, now whenever you use a beast skill, so in other words, your, your pet skill uh, or a soul beast beast skill, you're going to remove conditions from the Ranger uh, and their pet. So a bit more consistent condition cleanse, a bit more sustain on Rugged Growth as well, which basically says... Um, your pulsing heal while you have protection is going up in PvP and World versus World. And these two changes uh, combined, uh, what they're basically looking at, and kind of the survival stuff too, that's looking at making the Duelist Soul Beast build a little bit better in PvP in particular. You can see here that we have uh, some dagger buffs in PvP and World vs. World, just across the board, some cooldown reductions, and some stance cooldown reductions too. And this is a, basically a direct buff, because um, this particular build, this Duelist build, this dagger build, it actually ran a whole bunch of stances anyway. Uh, so cooldown reduction on Doliac stance is really nice. It reduces the duration, but that's okay, because again, having it more frequently is better than having it slightly longer, uh, less frequently, just off the bat. Same thing with Griffin stance, or that doesn't even get a duration reduction. Uh, across the board. And Primal Cry, you now get Poison as well, uh, which synergizes with Poison Master, which is, of course, a key trait for increasing damage output and more poison application uh, on Ranger. And also just gives you more DPS on Conley Soul Beast, I guess. So, hey, not too bad there in that regard. Uh, no reduction on Signet of Stone. Probably not because they're worried about stuff that makes you go invulnerable, which does make a little bit of sense in that regard. So yeah, uh, they want to bring back that Duelist Soul Beast. I think Zintrax was one of the very few people who actually played this. I'm not talking about the trap build. The trap build is very, very mediocre, not good. Uh, this build was actually very powerful. It was a very strong Duelist, actually, uh, while it was around. And of course, you could even have your Stance Share. But I think they want you to use uh, Eternal Bond, right, is what they want you to use. So you can kind of do the swapping thing, right, um, without necessarily dropping out of Beast Mode. That's the direction they want you to go there. So yeah, kind of cool changes there. It's always good to see a little bit of variety. The PvP meta in particular has become very one-dimensional. A lot of spell break, a lot of catalyst. Not a lot of room for anything else, unfortunately. You hate to see it. You really, really do. Unlucky gamers. Unlucky stuff. Yeah, I mean, that's not really that much to say about this, to be honest. I do say this is a little bit spooky. Okay, Signet of the Hunt. You now gain unblockable stacks and super speed. With a 20 second cooldown. I mean, that that sounds a little bit disgusting um, to me. I'm not going to lie. That, you know, that seems a little disgusting. Because uh, Ranger is already a bit of a menace in World vs. World. And, like, the sniper builds can be a bit of a menace in PvP too. Um, this is a very powerful skill. Now, Ranger utilities are actually... Um, you know, they're pretty competitive. Ranger has really good skills. Like, Lightning Rip is really good. Quickening Zephyr is also a good skill to kind of meme people with. But now, Signet of the Hunt... Oh shit, 20 second cooldown, 10 stacks of unblockable, and super speed. That's a monster ability, okay? That's great for kiting, great for chasing and hunting people down, doing damage, of course, um, you know, for you know, getting up close and blasting people and getting through blocks and so on. Very powerful ability. Like, this is certainly going to be something that you see pop up in the repertoire of rangers here as well. 
Signet of the Wild and Signet of Renewal. Just cool down reductions. That's always kind of cool stuff, right? I mean, you know, now you can use your buttons a little bit more. This one is a really fun one because it basically instantly kills your pet because uh, resistance doesn't, um, you know, make you immune to colonies anymore. Uh, CMC actually spoke that they were thinking uh, if this isn't good enough and your pet still insta-dies because it gives resolution now uh, for some damage reduction on your pet. If it still insta-dies, they'll actually consider making it so that your pet becomes briefly immune to conditions to basically make this ability a bit more usable without your pet immediately dying from eating all the condies from nearby allies. So that's something to think about uh, there as well. And the final change, it's a small number, but I think this is a pretty big difference here, right? Um, a pretty damn big difference. Read the line. You didn't understand what I said. I know it gives resistance, but resist does not prevent damage anymore. It only produces, uh, produces the, well, destroys the effect of debilitating conditions, my friend. You don't know what re uh, resistance does. Boom! Yeah. Nice! But that's okay. You do. Just to clarify, resistance makes you immune to debilitating conditions. Resolution gives you damage reduction um, against conditions. The reason why this ability um, got significantly weaker was because previously resistance made your pet immune to conditions. Yeah. Okay. So, unnatural traversal. This skill is no longer instant and has a casting time of 0.25 seconds. This is actually a big nerf, right? Uh, and let me tell you why. So here's the thing about Untamed. Untamed had this ability to kind of precast abilities and then immediately pour onto you and annihilate you. This is no longer going to be the case. Now, this isn't saying we want Untamed to be bad. What this is trying to do is make Untamed more interactive. This is the problem. Uh, the complaint about Untamed has always been it ports on you and one-shots you. Right? That's the issue. Um, and because Unnatural Traversal was instant cast, that means you could pre start casting an ability and during the cast time of that ability, teleport onto an enemy. You can't do that now. That is a very, very big difference between those two scenarios. Yes, this is still a great skill for chasing, but it gives your opponent so much more time to actually respond to what you're doing. It makes it way more telegraphed, way more counterplayable, because again, this is what's going to happen. It's going to port on you and then start casting an ability. As opposed to, it's going to start casting an ability and port and then right and hit you immediately. Okay? Right? That's the thing. Um, in this regard. This is a big change. Untamed will definitely still be very powerful in the hands of a skilled player. 100%. However, it will now be significantly more counterplayable. And again, that's kind of a theme on this patch, is improving counterplay in PvP. Uh, so, a good change there in my opinion. Is there anything else for Ranger? I don't think so, um, uh, in particular. I think un Entangle is a skill that honestly should probably be a bit reworked. Like, Pulsing Immobilize is um, cancer. Uh, not good. Um, and especially with a cooldown reduction, even without Wilderness Survival. Uh, not fun. Nobody likes Entangle. I bet even Rangers don't like Entangle. Not fun. Horrible ability. Uh, not good. Yeah. But anyway... That's Ranger. Ranger gaming, Ranger content. Right, Revenant. Okay, let's take a look, guys. Oh, we'll, we'll actually, we'll clean up the PvE stuff first. There's a bit more on PvP, so we'll, we'll kind of clean up PvE. Uh, actually, really nice changes here. We have Free Fury on uh, Renegade now. So in other words, you just, you know, the health threshold required for Endless Enmity is gone. Now, you just crit people and you get a bit of AoE Fury. Lovely. Uh, this is actually nice for, of course, all Renegade builds, including the DPS builds. But I think particularly super nice if you're playing a lack uh, Renegade too. And this is further compounded with Brutal Momentum. Now you just get 10% increased critical hit chance when endurance up, uh, when, when endurance is uh, all the time, when it's not full. In addition to the 33% when endurance is full. This gives you a colossal amount of critical strike, actually, um, with just this trait. I believe that's 43% crit, plus, of course, an extra 25, well, 50% from Fury, right? Wait, does that mean you get you get 93% crit chance, guys, with just Invocation and Renegade? That's actually insane, right? That's actually big. 
That is big. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Oh, no, it doesn't do that. It says when it's not full. Ah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't do that. It says it's 10% when it's not full, and then 30% when it is full. So you just always have at least 10%. It doesn't do that. Well, I was getting excited there. But still, that's a really nice quality of life um, to have there. Because, you know, if you dodge, your DPS is significantly compromised. Now that won't happen nearly as much. And also, they did talk about this on the stream. They want to try and bring Renegade back in PvP. I don't know why, right? I don't like Renegade. Um, I don't think it's good. And in fact, these changes probably don't make it good either. I think it's probably still not good. Probably still trash. But you know what? That's good. I like it. Um, enjoy. Uh, <laughs> There's actually a note that wasn't here, that, I that isn't here, but was on the stream. They improved the alacrity duration in PvE for orders from above from 1.5 seconds to 2 seconds. They might have actually patched that out or changed their mind on that. I hope they haven't because I think that Alak Renegade could really use some help because it requires a ridiculous amount of boon duration right now. So I'm hoping it's kind of just missing and they forgot to add it here that will be a really nice change a lack renegade definitely one of those was that completely fell off the map with eod uh because it got well it got power crapped basically by every other build in the entire game in my opinion it probably still needs a little bit more to help it out there probably a bit more might duration it has a little bit but it's not amazing to be honest um and you know it has a bit of pro now it has fury so it's definitely a more respectable build i'd say um if they go through with that change but right now it just requires so much boon duration um for what it does that i don't see a lack run being super great outside of fractals in pvp not super relevant uh but looks like they want to bring it back but you know what maybe cmc should change his mind about that you know maybe maybe we don't want that to come back but anyway um, we have something else. Resilient Spirit. This is a Vindicator targeted change. Because Vindicator has been, you know, Aino were like, we're going to nerf the sustain of Vindicator. But we're also going to rework the Salvation trait line. Oh no. Oh god no. Yeah. Uh, all the Vindicators started using Salvation instead for their sustain trait line while still having very heavy damage. And basically, the long and the short of it is, they reduce the barrier you get for having boons, uh, pulsing barrier for having boons in PvP only, and they also reduced a lot of base damage on Vindicator. The reason for this is that they want to make it, sh make it so that if you play Salvation, you are a relatively low output build. And if you want to do high damage, you're going to need to commit to uh, an offensive trait line you have to go into devastation for example uh to get damage output otherwise you potentially won't be able to actually uh end up hitting that hard right uh this i mean i don't know it's actually really hard to evaluate all these changes the, the meta right now is really messed up because of catalyst and spellbreaker just absolutely owning everything um so it's very difficult to see where something like vindicator is going to fall into this but in general i do like the design here like purity of purpose is good it's probably not a very good idea to have a tanky omega dps built that can also uh, be relatively mobile at the same time right like it's not a good idea to do this like packaging builds into roles and forcing players to actually make meaningful decisions and trade-offs can my build do damage can it be tanky can it sting can it 1v1 yeah this is probably a good idea. Uh, and honestly, Vindicator can be a little bit of a menace, right? Uh, it can absolutely destroy you um, in a pretty disgusting way. I'm still not a big fan of the Greatsword 5 ability. The little AoEs like follow you around. Very annoying to deal with that ability, I think. But you know what, guys? We're living in EOD. We just live, we enjoy it, we embrace it. But uh, overall, I think this is pretty good stuff. Um, PvP, we're going to have to let the dust settle, though. Because, again, the meta is utterly distorted right now. So we can't really see how all of this stuff is going to play out until we actually get into the game, in my opinion. Um, but, yeah, I like the idea. Right, that's what I'm going to say. I, I like the idea of this. Uh, Vindicator will probably still be it'll probably still be pretty good in, in some sense um, here as well. Um, yep, there it is. Ooh, this is actually a big one too. Imperial Impact. It no longer inflicts chill in PvP. Ooh, that's actually a fucking meme. Wow. Wow. Because uh, this chill was a big part of this. Because you would use it to snare people and then kind of stick to them on your Vindicator and do big damage. Ooh. Interesting. Nobody played that trait? I actually saw Souls play that trait, actually. Uh, I saw a good chunk of Vindicators play this, actually. I know a lot of people played the damage trait, but I saw this one played as well. But now it doesn't. 
Well, I guess nobody played it. Death drop or reroll? Wow. Interesting. I play that trait always. Yeah, it's weird, because I actually saw quite a lot of people play this trait. Wow. I guess everyone's unhinged. Uh, but there you go. Now you don't chill people. Unlucky. Still doing PvE, though, because obviously it's not really super relevant in PvE. But with GS2, ah, yes. This is uh, actually a classic bug. This is, I, I wonder if they fixed it. They haven't put it in the notes here. But right now there is a bug um, <laughs> with Death Drop that causes it to do way more damage than it should. It's absolutely insane. It's very impactful in PvE, of course, uh, where the damage gets truly absurd. I wonder if they fix that. It's a pretty widely reported bug, so maybe they have. We'll see. We shall see, my friends. We shall see. Yeah, it is how you get top DPS on HTCM with your Vindicator. Uh, elephant in the room here, Herald. Herald actually doesn't get touched at all. And this is what I was talking about at the start. I was really expecting um, Herald to get some pretty significant changes to the way boon application worked. Didn't happen. Didn't get made better in PvP. You know, Herald has been so good for such a long time. Held became a noodle, you know, unlucky. Oh yeah, Mirage didn't get its dodge back. Ha 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 ha, unlucky. That's how it is. Or Ranger Spirits. Yeah, that's true. Where are my Ranger Spirit changes? Where are my banner changes on Warrior? But this is not the patch, my friends. I was definitely expecting a lot more reworks, to be honest, um, actually, in, uh, in these builds. You know, I, I think that numbers are really nice, but targeting reworks is pretty good. It's pretty good stuff. But that's it for Rev. Uh, you know, it's a few little changes there. You know, Vindicator. Renegade a bit better in PvE. Very nice, very nice, very nice. Uh, you know, the annoying sustained bunker builds getting nerfed. Feels good, feels good, feels good. Thief! Oh. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> ah, there are some fun ones here. Oh, Keen Observer. Reduced health threshold. Look at that! They actually did it! So you now get your crit shards. You can now actually play the game when you have less than 90% uh, health. Very good. We love to see that for all of our Power Thief DPS builds. Yeah. Dead devil. Oh, dearie, 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 dearie me. Um, so this is where things get a little, uh, a little, a uh, little weird, right? A little, a uh, little meme. So here's the thing. Steel is no longer replaced by Swipe when the Daredevil specialization is equipped. So this basically means that your cooldown is going to go up because Swipe has a shorter cooldown. And Swipe is also unblockable as well. Um, this is a very interesting thing. I'd probably... I would honestly want to talk to a Thief expert about this because Thief is one of the builds that I actually don't play very much, especially in PvP. Um... My mind is kind of telling me that this actually isn't necessarily good. Because you get 1200 range, which is really nice as a shadow step, obviously. But unblockable is incredibly good. It's incredibly, 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 incredibly good. Um, it allows you to deny someone's block, right? Because you can combo that with the interrupt trait, right? Um, slide of hand, right? To get the... Um, one second days, completely unblockable. It's very, very good. I would evaluate this as a nerf for sure. Uh, I think you'd want to talk to the PvP nerds to confirm. The PvP nerds in the chat are saying that it is, um, overall. But yeah, there you go. There you go. In this regard. Yeah, you can still Basilisk Venom up to get unblockable on regular steel. Uh, and... That's something, I guess. And apparently they are reducing the cooldown as well to actually basically match it. So it's 25 seconds everywhere. So to kind of compensate for that a little bit. It's a bit weird. Now, let me actually talk about this. What's actually going on here? In my opinion, ArenaNet are looking at Thief and they're going, wow, Thief is quite unfun, isn't it? And they're correct. Uh, Thief has historically been extraordinarily unfun. Spamming evasion, spamming stealth, with uninteractive instant cast abilities. So, what's their solution here? What are they thinking? The the way um the way I'm looking at this um is they're going to try and strip away all of the uninteractivity from Thief and buff it. Because honestly, Daredevil right now, it's not super great in PvP, it's definitely more of a PvP change. 
Um, in general, Thief is not that good right now, actually. Uh, th th yeah, first time we've heard that, honestly, in a very long time, actually. That's a big one. Um, but I think we're going to see some changes there. We see a few buffs to Daredevil in PvE, more Condi damage, and just, hey, uh, more CC, I guess, and just a little bit more of that um, for your Thief there. And kind of on that interactivity, take a look at this. So, Shadow Meld. Oh, ho, 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 ho. I can see Azadome screaming in pain right now. Um, this skill, Shadow Meld, the elite skill, no longer removes Revealed in PvP and World vs. World. Oh, ho, ho. Ah, that is brutal. Holy shit. So, this ability is a bit game-breaking, right? It's a bit of a game It's an interesting idea for a skill, right? Like, ooh, counterplay to reveal. But it turns out, yeah, that's maybe not a very good idea, right? That's maybe not super smart. Now, it just gives you stealth in PvP and World vs. World. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Absolutely brutal, dude. Holy shit. Yeah. Um, this is a big nerf. It means that you have a lot more counterplay. If you can land a reveal on a Deadeye, they're a lot more vulnerable. Bear in mind, Deadeye is... Um, it's not as slippery as other Thief builds. It's not as good at surviving. It's a bit more vulnerable if you can stick on it. And now that it can't just instantly stealth itself again and run away, that's big. Again, I hate... Look, I have some bad news for all you Deadeye haters here. I actually do think that they'll probably buff Deadeye uh, down the line to compensate for this. Because I don't think they want Deadeye to be dead. They want Deadeye to be balanced and interactive and not horribly unfun. That's what they're looking at here. Because right now, I'm going to tell you a secret, guys. Yeah, Deadeye is extra extraordinarily unfun. Right? It is one of the least fun builds in the entire game to play against in PvP. Um, and a big part of that is because of this stealth abuse. And in general, the Shadow Arts trait line is just unfun. Uh, and that's why I had to get nerfed so aggressively over time. But yeah, now you're going to get revealed uh, and you will die. So stay tuned until you get buffed again, Deadeye mains. Uh, but you know, you're not looking so hot for now, that's for sure. Uh, some rifle buffs in PvE. Um, I mean, you're very dagger focused currently. Uh, and just having rifle as a now a very solid ranged option. Um, well, it already was pretty decent, but now you have even more damage when you're at range. I think this really does solidify Deadeye as a very robust DPS build. Definitely one that requires a bit of finesse to play. And it is very glass canny, very low utility. Um... But honestly, uh, now you have even better range damage than you already did, uh, in addition to your dagger uh, at the same time. Yeah, I mean, not bad. Yeah, not bad at all there. Uh, Deadeye the Glass Cannon. For a long time, the Deadeye mains wanted the big DPS. And good news, you now have the big DPS. Congratulations. Enjoy. <laughs> you have the big damage. Wow. You love to see it. Is there anything else that happened here? Oh, nice buff to Thief 2, actually. Skelk Venom. This kind of gives Thief a bit more utility. It's like an AoE healing Venom. Just nice. Just nice to have, to be honest, uh, overall. The cooldown reductions, I don't think, are super impactful. I think um, the one to watch out for here on this Signet trait is actually Infiltrator's Signet, to be honest. Um, because this one actually did see some play in PvP, actually. It, I've seen a few Thieves mess around with this build, actually. Um, and... Free cooldown reduction, not horrible. It is a powerful skill, right? Uh, just a 12 hour range shadow step is just a solid skill to have. A decent tool in the toolkit of your thief for mobility. Signets of power is interesting. This could potentially be a little bit scary, to be honest. You gain one initiative when you use a signet. Not super impactful right now. I think they wanted to start it out quite small before uh, before going ahead and you know moving it up. <laughs> And also, we've... Oh, dude. Like, honestly, I'm going crazy on Thief, guys. I'm going insane. Um, Deadeye's Mark is no longer ruined. The Deadeye goes in the downstate. Massive quality of life in PvE for players who are looking to kind of get into Deadeye, right? Really nice. Really, really, really nice. You love to see it. You really do. And a uh, bit of a mixed bag with Spectre here as well, actually. I, um... First, let's start with the good. Shadow Sap. This is the uh, second skill on Scepter for um, Spectre. And the enemy targeted grants Might in an area around the Spectre. And the allied targeted version now grants Protection. 
This is actually mainly a buff to Heal Spectre, actually. As I believe this will make it so that Heal Spectre is going to be very easily able to supply 25 might and protection to your subgroup. Prot was saying that it really lacked. Actually, it had decent might. It had alacrity, of course. Uh, you had your vigor. You had your might, your fury, swiftness, all that kind of good stuff. But now this is going to be very, very robust. Um, Permaprot and, well, if played correctly, and permanent 25 might on your heal specter, which I think is pretty cool, actually. It does still uh, grant protect. Oh, oh no. Is it, is it single target prop? Oh no. It does say, no. Ah! No, it must be AoE, right? <laughs> oh no! Well, that's unfortunate, guys. That's just unfortunate. If it's single target, I don't think it's very good. It's gotta be AoE. Well, I guess we'll see. We'll see when it actually drops, right? We'll see it when the patch hits, but I have a, a suspicion it'll be AoE, because I think they're really targeting Heal Spectre with this um, to try and make it um, much better. And this does make it a lot better, no joke. This actually does make it significantly better. Um, Heal Spectre looks pretty reasonable. I think it really, the, the problem with Heal Spectre, and again, the elephant in the room, let's talk about it now. Wells still suck. Um, the stability, resistance, and so on, the boons you get from Well of Bounty, they aren't controllable. You can't really be super reactive with applying your stability, with applying your resistance. Not good. Um, same with the Alacrity. You have to spam everything off cooldown to give Alacrity. Uh, pretty much. This is a big problem um, with Spectre, in my opinion. Of course, with Herald as well, and all the other stuff, you know the drill. Uh, big issue. Uh, I think it has to be addressed. I, I won't really consider Heal Spectre to be finished, or in a really good spot until it's got into a good position where you don't have to spam all your abilities off cooldown and when you actually have a lot more you have the ability to be a bit more reactive i guess you can be a bit reactive because you might be able to save well of bounty for the stability uh, and resistance and maybe you know kind of use the shadow set to generate might i guess but mm, i'm not totally convinced to be honest i'm not fully convinced and well of silence uh, it now dazes enemies on the initial strike, then removes condies from the area in, uh, on allies of each pulse. Gain shadow force for each condition removed. I think that, again, they're targeting like a heal specter for world versus world here. Um, and they've de they've removed pulsing days, right? Pulsing days, probably not a very good idea to have on any ability. Um, I almost don't like this, though, um, because... This was a really strong skill in PvE. I feel like it's worse now a lot of the time. Maybe? Um, and I don't... I'm not convinced in World vs. World that much. Uh, I'm not super convinced. Because, uh, again, Wells, they're small radius, they're stationary. I mean, I guess you... Uh, I, 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 I'm unconvinced. Let me just put it like that. I'm not convinced by this change um, significantly, uh, really. I mean, it, it's a good rework because it, pulsing days is probably never a good idea. We learned that from Renegade, guys. Uh, not very fun to have in the game. So, like, a direct day is not too bad. But I think, honestly, to round out on Spectre, I think all wells need a pass straight up. They need a, they need a look uh, overall. But, you know, some mixed bag here. Uh, Daredevil having the beginning of it being slightly reworked and slightly changed with the uh, change to steel over, uh, over swipe. Some fun stuff for Deadeye and PvE. A lot more damage there. Fun stuff for heal Spectre. Okay, so, Warrior. Well, let's actually get down the business first here. So, first things first. Spellbreaker and PvP got buffed. The defense trait line absolutely juiced the hell out of Spellbreaker in PvE and PvP. Uh, it's been, well, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's very strong. And unsurprisingly, we now see some nerfs coming through to Defense Spellbreaker. Specifically, Banner of Defense. This is the one that gives you Barrier, Aegis, and Regen. Uh, when you drop that down, it has been cooldown increased up to 40 seconds in PvP. Adrenal health healing is going down by, I want to say, what is that? That's about 20%, right? Uh, yeah, about 20% or so in the sustain of the warrior. We have a full counter. This is actually one of the big ones, in my opinion. Uh, for full counter. Uh, adrenal health and, say, Berserker's power. You will only get these effects if you actually hit someone with your full counter. Yes, this is big. That means you just don't get sustained for free just by basically spamming full counter on your warrior. Uh, adds another layer of counterplay. So now if you'll inevitably trigger full counters, obviously, in, say, a 1v1 or in team fights, um, And now you have the ability to actually dodge it. And then not only do you not get boon ripped and immobilized and stuff like that, now the warrior won't get sustained. This is good, right? Um, in general, having sustain that doesn't really have a huge amount of counterplay is not good. Uh, and as a result of that, this is good. 
Breaching Strike. And you can just see, you can kind of see how much damage, okay, <laughs> this ability actually did. <laughs> Reduced the bonus damage against enemies with no boons from 50% to 5% in PvP and World vs. World. That actually just looks, what a sad number. Like, <laughs> To be fair, this ability was slapping, right? This was very, very tasty um, in PvP. It would absolutely nuke people if you landed this on someone who didn't have boons. It was absolutely insane. So a little bit of a nerf to tone that down there. And this, a big part of this is because the defense trait line really enabled Spellbreaker to survive in PvP. But the problem is that it also made Spellbreaker hit really hard as well um, at the same time. Because it turns out that the defense trait line is a lie. Uh, the defense trait line actually has a lot of damage in it, in addition to a lot of um, sustain that you can get from stuff like adrenal health and so on, getting some uh, damage reduction and stuff. So it was a, it's a very multi-purpose trait line, to be honest. You know, purity of purpose might need a little bit of a look there. Uh, but yeah, this absolutely annihilated you. Um, if you got hit by this. It was devastating. This is still good. And I actually expect Spellbreaker to still be, even with these fairly significant nerfs, I definitely expect Spellbreaker to be a very competitive duelist um, and just, you know, presence within PvP. It's certainly not going anywhere, in my opinion. It just has a bit more counterplay to its sustain, which is good. I actually really like sustain counterplay in PvP. Abilities like Catalyst Hammer 4, right? You have to actually hit someone with your hammer skill to heal. Uh, I actually think design like this is actually very good. In fact, I'm a big fan of having uh, stuff tied into it like that. So you can, the opponent can actually prevent you from healing in a sense. Uh, I think that's good. Um, particularly when you're dealing with kind of passive healing and so on. So very good stuff there overall for our Spellbreaker. Just toning that down. Just a touch overall. Uh, another big thing that's been targeted here is actually, I feel like, Condi Berserker in PvP. Uh, Mace cooldown improvement. So, you know, counter blow. Uh, now has a 7 second cooldown. That's a block. My game has just crashed for absolutely no reason. But it, that's actually fine. It will keep playing the music until I close the game. That's fine by me. Um, so counter blow cooldown reduction. Pommel bash. This is actually a really fun one. If you interrupt someone with this, you get barrier. And I think that's nice. You know, it's a very responsive. You need to actually um, interrupt someone to get your barrier on your mace. Uh, and in general, they added a few changes to Berserker. So Blood Reckoning on Dead or Alive, basically when you enter Berserk, you get three seconds of uh, healing for the percentage of damage you're doing. Uh, Eternal Champion, you gain stability and endurance, 20 endurance in PvP when you enter Berserk. And all traits that trigger when entering Berserk also trigger when exiting Berserk. So that means that you're going to potentially get your... Uh, you're going to get your uh, stability again when you leave. And also, this isn't shown here, by the way, you can actually leave Berserk early. So if you need to trigger, say, more healing or dead or alive, or need your stability again, you can actually reactivate it and get it immediately. Uh, giving you a lot of flexibility, in fact, right, when you're dealing with uh, Berserker. Which I think is pretty cool. I'm actually slightly nervous about this, um, to be honest, because there's the other trait, the, the adept trait that makes you immune to damage, I believe, and gives you super speed and stun breaks you. Uh, it doesn't stun break you. They actually sp specifically said this when you leave Berserk. It will give you the other effects, though. Combine this with some of the um, stuff in defense that you can get, like the Endure Pain on Headbutt on Elite Skill, uh, for example. I think they've got to be a little bit careful um, with this. You could create a bit of a monstrosity, I think, that has very high stability uptime, lots of dodges, lots of healing from doing damage, um, uh, lots of super speed, lots of damage immunity. I don't think it's going to be good because Berserker is trash right now um, for PvP, but I, I mean, I think they've just got to they've got to tread carefully. Um, because you can activate that pretty consistently, um, you know, even even in PvP, I think, where obviously adrenaline is a bit of a limiting factor. You, I think they've got to be a, a touch, a touch careful, I think, um, with stuff like this, in my opinion. Uh, but, you know, it's cool to see that they're looking at it. Um, one thing that is notable is they, yeah, as our forum post pointed out, they didn't buff Berserker in PvE, and that's honestly a bit of a puzzler um, to me, because it's kind of like one of the, the really low-hanging fruit buffs, in my opinion. It just needs to do more damage, to be honest. Um, Condi Berserker got, like, a little itty-bitty buff. Um, you now get half the bleeding stacks 
all the time on Final Thrust. So you're going to do a little bit more damage in your Condi Berserker, your Condi Banner Berserker, and so on. Um, so that's something, I guess. But, uh, I mean, yeah. Like, in general, uh, Sword is usually used on meme builds on Warrior, right? You use it either on a support Warrior for mobility, or you use it on, like, a meme rifle one-shot build to one-tap people with Final Thrust and just leap around all over the place and shoot people. So I don't think that's super impactful. Uh, some cool directions across the board here, again, as we saw. Um, just blah, 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 blah. A lot of these skills probably aren't going to get used. Uh, Warrior utilities, are they're pretty strong. I don't really see Frenzy being used. Ignore the fact that this is an armored fish skill. Uh, my tooltip engine is not perfect. This is, of course, the Warrior Frenzy skill. It is not... Warriors are not actually armored fish. That's not the way it is. But yeah, I was spending a bit more for Warrior and PvE. And to be honest, I was expecting a banner rework. Because um, banners are a bit meh for PvE, to be honest. And yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe that's next time, guys. That's a little bit of a next time situation meme. You know what I mean? We can maybe uh, see that one happen too. Slight nerf to Hammer Spellbreaker in PvP. Um, it's a one second cooldown increase. I mean, yeah, Hammer Spellbreaker is still going to be good. It, this is a bit of a menace, guys. Okay, it is a complete menace um, <laughs> in PvP. <laughs> Especially for newer players. The chain CC is quite brutal. Uh, to be perfectly honest with you, so, you know, a little bit of a nerf there, guys, you know, it's, uh, yeah, a little bit of And look, the th thing is, they actually did buff Power Berserker. Look, increase the power coefficient 1.4 to 1.5. What? What? This is actually unhinged. It's unhinged, guys. It's completely insane. Why is it 0 0.1? Like... <laughs> To be fair, this does hit three times, so it's 0.3, to be clear, right? Um, but, not great. Uh, Berserker, definitely a little bit uh, left out in the cold here for PvE. Uh, some of the other Berserk skills, you know, trying to make the Berserk skills a bit better in PvP for our Berserker builds. Shattering Blow is a pretty good skill, I think, um, for PvP. A lot of adrenaline gain there. And I guess maybe some of these things could see some play. If the cooldown just gets completely obliterated, you can be really mobile. You're like leaping around like a complete lunatic. Definitely a possibility, but to me, I'm not saying it just yet. And yeah, that's not it for Warrior, guys. It's not over. We've got more to talk about. Number one, Blade Sworn nerf in PvE. And don't panic. Don't panic here, guys. Unless you are an actual speedrunner... So in other words, if you're in, like, one of five guilds in the entire game, this change basically changes nothing for you. Um, Martial Cadence, quickness duration is going from three to two seconds. Um, basically, the problem here was that full DPS Blades, literally full DPS Blade Swan gave respectable quickness uptime to the point where you could stack four of them um, and you could have permanent quickness uptime with just Blade Swans. Right? This is going to mitigate that uh, significantly because this activates on uh, Soldier's Focus, which I believe had a... It has a 15-second cooldown, right? So in other words... Was it, well, no, it was 10, it's 10 seconds. Yes, it's 10-second cooldown. So in other words, if you have four Blade Swarms, that gives you 120% quickness uptime. This basically says, okay, now you have... 80% quickness uptime on your, if you run four blades, which obviously is not enough. It's not 100%. And therefore, that is a little bit relevant. To be honest, I feel like you can kind of go harder there, right? Like that, if you just think of, that's insane. You have 80% quickness uptime with four, with literally four of the best DPS in the game. I mean, honestly, you could, this trait is kind of busted on a fundamental level. I'm not going to lie, guys. It, it's so disgusting. Um, this might actually, it might, you might have to go further uh, with this. But anyway, that, that we'll, 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 we'll worry about that when that happens. Uh, but this actually is still kind of nice utility, right? Like, this means if you're playing a Blade Swan, you're going to be giving a little bit of extra quickness duration um, to your team. So you're being a little bit useful on your DPS Blade Swan. And yeah, you're still going to stack Blade Swans, but you might do it for damage as opposed to the quickness. I could see, you know, you run like an ultra low... Um, quickness uh boon duration herald with this or, or like a chrono or something like that right uh, or yeah bring one banner i guess um so it slightly changes the way you're gonna play it but not that much i guess uh but yeah i mean in general i do think that ain't need to think about um banners and spirits giving quickness in general uh, and alacrity of course because 
having quickness, uh, quickness and uh, alacrity on core builds is a bit of a balance headache, to be honest. So they're probably going to have to think about that again. But that's basically it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Blade Sworn. Oh, yeah, guys. I, I didn't forget. Um, Blade Sworn actually got a bit of a rework. A bit of a rework here, actually. Um, the broad gist of it is that your gun saber abilities are all ranged now. Um, so let's just get this out of the way. In PvE, this is just basically a flat out quality of life improvement. This means that uh, you're able to continuously attack the boss on your Blade Sworn, even if you do have to temporarily go to range for whatever reason. Um, they actually said that this doesn't increase the damage overall. They've kind of rebalanced it so it doesn't. Uh, necessarily uh, improve the DPS overall in PvE. Um, so it's the same, but it's quality of life. Now you can do some DPS at ranged if you need to uh, in this regard. Uh, there's also a few bits of quality of life. You actually get Aegis, for example, on Cyclone Trigger, um, which is, yeah, hey, that's actually really sick, right? It means you have Aegis on Flicker Step and you also have it on Cyclone Trigger too. You have stability when you go into this. Honestly, I'm I'm not gonna lie, guys. Jesus. Dude, they're making these high DPS classes so broken. Oh my god. Ah. Ah. <laughs> it's so overpowered. Okay. <laughs> this does concern me a little bit. Like, when you have ranged abilities, have really solid defensives, and really solid damage, and respectable utility, I poor. God damn, like, it is, uh, it's a little bit spooky, to be honest, guys, like, especially with PV, we are, we're deep and we're through the looking glass of power creep, guys, Gah, we really are, um, in that regard, but anyway, uh, a few reworks of the way these abilities worked, um, artillery slash, this skill now consumes all ammo, getting bonus damage and different effects based on the ammo used, and that probably slightly modifies the rotation in PVE, I guess, um, but yeah, there it is, and the abilities are a bit different now, but, you know, yeah. It's been reworked. Now you're ranged. Now you're a, a true gun saber, not just a melee saber at the same time. Um, I think this is actually an attempt to kind of bring it back... Bring PV bring it back in PvP, because it got nuked from orbit, because it was utterly disgustingly broken. The Shout, Shout Swan build um, was horrible. They're trying to bring it back here with this... I don't think it will actually be good in PvP. I don't think so. It just doesn't seem good enough to me. I I'm thinking about what's in the meta right now. I'm thinking about Spellbreaker. Um, and I'm thinking, you know what? No, uh, I don't think it's going to cut it. Same thing with, you know, Catalyst is, you know, lurking around as well, right? Um, Vindicator, right? All this kind of crazy shit. It it's still going to be there. I'm not super impressed, to be honest, um, uh, by this setup. Uh, on Blade Sworn, but yeah, there you go. So yeah, because I, I guess it makes it easy to dodge now, because all the artillery slash is gonna go. Because now you can't, you'll basically have to, you're gonna dodge the artillery slash all in one go. Um, it's pretty interesting. You can get like a stun if you use all three ammos on um, in PvP, PvE, for example. It's like a two second stun, two second days if you use two charges in PvP. But yeah, I'm not seeing it. Um, probably needs a lot more work to bring it back. Uh, I. I consider myself incredibly unimpressed. Yeah, exactly. Three of them, yeah, because that it means you can space them out a bit more. Uh, and, well, they also hit pretty hard, too. So, yeah, uh, Blade Sworn, I think, still one of the weaker specs in PvP. Uh, and I, seeing as we're at the end, I guess I'm going to kind of express my views about this. I, I'm a little bit worried about the PvP balance, to be honest. Um, it feels like there are a lot of specs in PvP that are very not good. <laughs> and that's bad. For, that's bad. Because it makes ranked feel bad, because obviously not everyone plays, you know, the best builds possible in ranked. And that means that ranked gets incredibly skewed by what people are playing, which is not good. You always want it to be like, if you play well, you win. If you play badly, well, maybe you don't win, right? It's a really big problem. There are a few specs that are just amazing really this because i've been playing i played like 100 games of rank this season and there are some specs that are like oh my god i'm terrified keep it away from me right and there are others that are like yeah this is actual garbage right um yeah <laughs> which is not ideal i think there's a lot of work i mean 
I don't want to be a bit of a doomer or be overly critical because I, I think this is a decent sized patch. There's some good stuff here. There really is. Um, you know, I, I'm not like super mad about this patch. You know, hey, oh, I forgot this, guys. They forgot to nerf Virtuoso. Seriously, I blame Emmy for this. This is Emmy's fault. Emmy has somehow managed to bring enough propaganda to the table that they didn't nerf the distortion on Virtuoso. I don't know. I don't know. Seriously, I don't know how she's pulled this off, right? But somehow. Somehow Virtuoso didn't get nerfed, right? Actually insane. Very impressive. Uh, and they buffed Heal Chrono. Whoa, this is a big conspiracy. Emmy has been playing Heal Chrono on stream, and now they buff Heal Chrono? Oh dear. Looks like we've caught you. You've been exposed. Yeah, Virtuoso in PvP is actually a disgusting build. Um, yeah. <laughs> Watch out for that one. Distort, block, reset your distort with a stupid signet, and then you've got the distort utility skill as well. Horrible build. Um, <laughs> Not sure about that one. Uh, don't like that. Not good. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I, I am a little bit worried about this. I'm worried because... Okay, let's not piss about. PvP in particular is in deep shit. We all know it. PvP population has tanked. It has dropped through the floor. Uh, and to be honest, there are big issues. Okay? There are very... Look, seriously, you guys know... Look, Boyce is like the PvP barometer. If even Boyce isn't queuing PvP, then this is dead. Right? And boys are like, oh, I'm going to play Apex, bro. Yeah, I'm, I'm having so much fun in my Apex game. Oh, wow, this is so cool. Right? Oh, wow, I'm having fun. Right? When that's happening, we're in serious trouble. Okay? Um, that's not good. That's really, really bad. And I'm a little bit worried that they've got to move pretty fast here. Uh, there are a lot. Right now, there are a huge amount of outstanding issues in the game. Uh, PvE boon application is still messed up. There's a lot of things that need to be tweaked with damage. Uh, PvP, I think, is actually pretty messed up right now. There are a lot of heavily overperforming specs and a lot of heavily underperforming specs in PvP. I mean, the skills team, they've got their work cut out. In my opinion, this is good. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I look at these changes, I go, oh, this is kind of cool. You know, I'm kind of liking where this is going. This sounds pretty decent. I like it. Oh, yeah, PvE has got, it's like infested with bugs. That's obviously not great. Um, They've got to get some work done, then they've got to get it done fast. Because I do think that there are some pretty negative things in the game right now. Some pretty significant problems um, with especially PvP, uh, but certainly just the overall design of the game. And we need to see some design changes. I was very excited about this patch because I was expecting design changes. And we did see a few with the Mantra um, reversion, right? And of course, Blade Swan getting uh, redesigned a little bit. Willbender having a bit of a redesign um, uh, too as well. Uh, staff getting redesigned. But I do think we need a little bit more. We need... This This is a problem. We're, I'm a little bit spooked. Um, we need to see mechanics changes. And I know... Look, I'm a consumer. I'm not a, re I'm not a dev. And yes, to be clear, mechanical changes are obviously the most expensive in terms of development time and the hardest to get right and the hardest to do. But... <laughs> I, I think we need a lot of mechanics changes because this is what's really holding the game back right now, especially in PvP, are mechanical changes. Um, and a lot of underperforming stuff, it's partially due to mechanics. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know about this one. It feels like we're taking a small step forward, but we've got to climb up a massive staircase to get the game. I mean, I, I guess I shouldn't be surprised. I'm actually on record saying that unfucking Guild Wars 2 is going to take years, right, um, to do. And I think that still is accurate. I believe that the job that Roy and CMC have ahead of them will take years to actually get the game into a state where I think uh, the community would broadly be happy with and accept, of course. Um, but yeah, the, I think they've they've got to keep this up. They've got to keep the grind up. Um, there's good stuff in here, but we need a lot more. That's my overall conclusion um, because there are major issues that need to be significantly uh, significantly addressed over time. Otherwise, I think we're going to see consistent negative performance in PvP uh, and ultimately uh, unrest in 
uh, in PvE and World vs. World. Honestly, I've got to say, the game mode they've done a good job on, in my opinion, is World vs. World. I'm loving that Druid is seeing play now. Uh, the World vs. has got a lot of different DPS options. You know, DH, Willbender, your Necromancers. Um... Oh, your Revenant DPS builds, your LE DPS builds, of course. Right, that is super fun, actually. Uh, that's cool. There's loads of different things. Loads of people have got stability. People have got, uh, there's loads of different support builds that are kind of floating around. You know, you've got your LE, you got your Scrappers, uh, right? You know, uh, Vindicators going, right? All this stuff. Th that's nice. That is nice. Chrono being looked at here. That's super fun. Warrior having some really cool utility as a DPS and as a support in World vs. World. I kind of like that. Um, they're doing a good job there. But to be honest, I think that PvP in particular is struggling a bit, and, and PvE just needs... PvE needs to really be hit with a hammer, I think. Um, they, yeah. That's it. That's what I've got to say. Hit it with a hammer, CMC. Deploy the hammer. That just kind of rounds things out. In summary, uh, Catalyst and Spellbreaker getting nerfed in PvP. Really fun staff changes. Heal Tempest and Alacrity Tempest looking good in PvE. Lots of fun stuff there. Uh, Weaver is going to be Apocalypse level, it seems. Very, very powerful uh, by the looks of Weaver in the upcoming uh, patch. If you're a DPS fan across the board. Condimech looking super juicy. Um, DH a bit juicier with a bit more support baked into it. Uh, and just more damage with the sword focus setup with some more you know, reduced cooldowns on your defensives. Firebrand Mantras are back, and a few buffs in PvP. Probably not enough yet, but looking good. Mesma Mantra uh, changes, also very similar to Firebrand. Heal Chronomancer getting a fair bit better, I'd say. A bit more of a well-rounded build than World vs. All, which is always cool to see. Uh, and some usability improvements, too. Necromancer, honestly a bit quiet. I'd say slightly better in... Uh, in PvP, with the changes to your soul is mine and chilled to the bone, having cooldown reductions. Pretty good skills there. Uh, Dagger, honestly, still quite disappointing. Uh, Ranger, I feel like nothing super interesting with Ranger. Signa the Hunt's going to be good. The Duelist Solby, Zintrex is going to be happy because he likes that one. Untamed being a lot more interactive. Vindicator nerfs in PvP, uh, making Vindicator a little, little bit less annoying, having to dedicate to its damage a bit more. Uh, Renegade, better in PvE, with Alacrity Renegade being stronger with the condition and the power builds, I think, becoming a little bit stronger with some Fury application. Uh, Thief, uh, Daredevil, uh, in the process, a bit of a tumultuous time, I would say, uh, for Daredevil in PvP. Slight buffs in PvE, though, so I guess it's got that going for it. And Deadeye gets better as well. And Spectre, Heal Spectre. Hell yeah, let's go. Boom! Heal Spectre Gaming. I love to see it. I love to see some Heal Spectre. And Warrior. They just changed a bunch of stuff. Bladesworn got reworked. Berserker, probably not good in PvP. Willbender. Yep. Bladesworn. Dogsworn, not good in PvP. Spellbreaker, probably still good in PvP. But then it will have to deal with that, uh, you know, it might have to contend with the Untamed, or rather the, the Soul Beast. In fact. Yeah. This build was, it, you know, whenever I saw Zintrex play this, it looked really strong. No joke. It looked really good. Yeah. How can you say they buffed Daredevil in PvE? Because they did. Uh, you now have uh, Impairing Daggers cooldown. It's 18 seconds. Impact Strike is also down as well. And Swipe versus steel distinction wasn't that important um so steel is usually going to be better in pve uh because you can go further nice i have to kick heal specters i blame you what, what do you mean guys heal specter is not heal specter is not that bad whenever people talk about heal specter they're always like they they like compare it to like heal blade sworn heal blade sworn yes that build is trash i agree uh well I feel bad about saying it's trash because there's probably like one guy who's like, oh, I love Heal Blade Sworn. It's my favorite build ever. I feel bad about saying it. Heal Spectre is not that bad. Okay. It's not that bad. It's one of the weaker builds, but it's not, it's not trash. Okay. It's not trash, guys. But that's it. That is the balance. Uh, that is the balance preview all wrapped up. I am, how long, this was a big one. I don't know how long this took me, but it took me ages, I think. What the hell? But anyway, that is that. Enjoy. Let me know what you guys think about this full breakdown. I almost feel like this might have to be split into two videos because it was so colossal, actually. But either way, let me know what you think in the comments and make sure to follow and subscribe. Hit the button. Use the bell notification. Right? That's, that's what I've got to do in the YouTube video, right? But that's it. 
We got it all done. We went through the entire thing. A meaty patch, a juicy patch. Still seemingly not juicy enough. But that's it. Let me know what you think, gamers. I think some uh, interesting ideas there. And of course, very excited to see how it actually pans out in the game itself when we get there on Valentine's Day, guys. You know, you that can be a beautiful romantic evening. You and your loved one can log on to Guild Wars 2 together, right? And just rejoice in, in the love and care that CMC and Roy have for each other, but also for Guild Wars 2. And you can share in that with some epic Guild Wars 2 balance patch action on Valentine's Day. Isn't that beautiful? I like that, but that's it. <laughs> That's it. That's all I've got for you. I'll see you guys next time, okay? I'm out. <laughs> the YouTube people are gone, guys. I'm still here, though. I'm still here. <laughs>